Yo, it's your boy Six and welcome back to another self-working card trick tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you a card trick that fools magicians. But first, let me welcome you to the new studio. Took a little while to build a lot of cool elements here and I'll be changing out the background a little bit uh, to you know, show a little bit more about my personality, things that I care about, things that I've collected over the years. Comment down below and let me know what you think of the new setup and let me know if I should drop anything special on one of these shelves if you got any cool ideas. With that being said, let's talk about our card trick today. This effect was originally created by Jack McMillan and published an expert card technique under the title of the Mind Mirror. It was later republished in the World Road to Card Magic with the title of Mirror of the Mind. Let's go ahead and take a look at the performance of this effect. It's gonna be a little challenging to do without an actual spectator here, but you'll get the idea. So I hand the deck of cards to the spectator before I even do that. I'll actually tell them, uh, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna deal cards onto the table and at any time you like, you're gonna stop dealing. Do you understand? They say yes, great. So what's gonna happen is I take these cards, I hand them to them, the spectator then begins dealing. As they start dealing, I tell them go a little bit slower. I want you to deal nice and slow and I want you to get a feel for the cards and stop really whenever you want. At this point, I turn away, I don't look. So the spectators keep dealing just like this. Eventually they'll stop and I say take a look at the top card. So in this case, this would be the top card. Hopefully you can see it there. I'll make it pop up on the screen when I review this later because I don't know the card. They place it back on top and they're gonna take the rest of the cards and drop those right on top just like that. All of this while I'm still turning away. And then I tell them what I would like you to do is shuffle the cards, give them a riffle shuffle. So they go ahead, give them a riffle shuffle and I go to take them back, but I say, you know what? Maybe you think I'm gonna be sneaky. Give it another shuffle, mix them up one more time. So the spectators actually shuffle the cards twice before I ever touch them. I take the cards back and now the magic begins. I do a little hocus pocus, try to read their mind. And I'm gonna go through and hmm, I'm gonna take out one card. I'm gonna place this card down on the table. I ask the spectator for the first time to tell me the card that they're thinking of in their mind. And I don't, I don't know what it is because I showed it to you, but I'm hoping we got it right. In this case, the king of diamonds. And I promise you, this is a fantastic effect that you're absolutely gonna love. So let's go ahead and get directly in to the explanation. All right, my friends, let's talk about how this effect works. It's a fantastic effect, and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Uh, for this effect to work, you're gonna remove all of one suit, clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds, whichever you like. I'm gonna use the diamonds. I like that because I think magicians are more familiar with the spade stack, as we call it. So I use the diamonds just to throw them off a little bit because I feel like they don't normally associate the method with this diamond. They will see a spade and maybe assume that might be one of the methods. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the diamonds. And what I also like is that if you're, if you're proficient at culling cards, right? Uh, you can, let's say the six of spades, you can bring those cards to the top of the pack just as you look through the pack, right? So you can cull all your diamonds and get the trick set up in the same way. And that's important because the method doesn't rely on the order, which is great. So it doesn't matter what order these diamonds end up in, the effect will still work. Aside from that, you do have to know the top card of this stack. So in this case, the ace of diamonds is my key card. So I have a spade stack or in this case a diamond stack, and I have a key card, which is the top card, in this case the ace of diamonds. You just memorize whatever top card it is. If you feel like you don't have a great memory, just put whichever number is your favorite, or whichever card value is your favorite, and put it at the top, and then you know which one you're looking for. Another subtlety that I like to do, is I'm gonna take four random cards here, and I'm gonna place these at the top of the pack. So I'm gonna add those four random cards to the pack. Again, you can cull all the diamonds to the top and then just add four random cards on top either through a shuffle or through a cull and still end up in the same position. Uh, for this method to work, that ace of diamonds does need to be on top. So I'm gonna tell you two things. One, you can set it up that way from the beginning and start here. If you don't wanna do any extra work, just have the ace of diamonds on top. And then from here, you can start the method from them dealing. So you can jump to that part. Or if you're like me, I like to add this extra subtlety. And what I do is I take those four cards and I put them on top of the Ace of Diamonds. I'm still gonna get the Ace of Diamonds on top here. Let me just show you how I do it. 
So as I explain to the spectator, you're gonna deal down the cards one at a time. I start doing it as an example. And so you're gonna take the cards onto the table and deal them one at a time, just like this. And anytime you get the urge to stop, you're gonna stop. Do you understand? They say yes. Let me show you what I just did. I now dealt one, two, three, four cards, and the fifth card is the Ace of Diamonds. So I literally set the pack up. I said, great, I picked these up, drop those on top, and hand them to the spectator. What I did there was I set up the cards with the Ace of Diamonds at the top, the four random cards underneath it, and then my diamond stack, just through an example. And why I like that method is because I get to show these random cards, and it's kind of subtly telling the spectator that there is no setup, especially, like I said, if you're doing it to a magician, you're showing them, hey, there's no setup here. You can see diamonds, clubs, and hearts, and spades, and they're gonna go, oh, okay, so maybe there's no stack. Really subtle. You don't wanna be explicit if you're trying to fool somebody because it's like, hmm, it sounds a little suspicious that you're telling me that, but you just simply show it dealing the cards. Another way is if you prefer the setup and the Ace of Diamonds is already on top. So let's just say you did that setup here. Ace of Diamonds, four random cards, all the diamonds. You can just deal, see, I'm gonna have you deal through the cards one at a time just like this and anytime you get the urge to stop dealing, you're gonna stop. Do you understand? Great, now you can simply pick up four cards instead of the, uh, the, the bottom most card, the Ace of Diamonds here, pick up those four, drop those on top as if you forgot one card, drop it on top as well. I like the other way because usually I do an impromptu so I'll be in that position and then I can just set up the stack as I, as I deal giving them an example. Nonetheless, for this method to work, I'm gonna reiterate, Ace of Diamonds, the card, you, the diamond you memorize on top, four random cards, the rest of diamonds. You don't even need the four random cards, so if you don't want the four random cards, literally just put all the diamonds on top, memorize the diamond card, and you can start from this position. Here's how it works. So the spectators are gonna deal. So the first card dealt is the Ace of Diamonds. Then they're gonna deal the rest of the cards. You, the, the extra tip that I can give you on this is that you want them to deal slowly. Because if they start dealing fast, they may go past your stack and you don't want that to happen. So to avoid that, what I do is I have them deal slowly because no one's gonna take all that time to deal the cards. So you start by having them deal one card, say put one card on the table and wait a second, deal another card, wait a second. Now at this point I'm looking at my spectator as they do this and I wanna make sure they get past four or five cards because remember I have four extra cards there and I don't want them to stop there. So let's say that I see them get here and say, perfect. I'm gonna turn around. Make sure you also do it silently. So you're doing two things. Say deal slowly and deal silently so I don't hear because maybe you think I'm doing something tricky with my sound, right? I'm listening in to the sound of the cards. So I get here and the spectator can keep dealing. And all I'm worried about is that they stop somewhere where there's a diamond. So the spectator stops dealing. You say, take a look at the top card of the deck. In this case, it's the eight of diamonds. So now that I have the eight of diamonds on top, what I'm gonna do is tell them to, to look at that card, memorize it. I'm still turned around, so I don't see anything. So they take the rest of the cards and place them on top. And when they do that, they're placing the ace of diamonds on top of their card. I don't know what diamond they pick. All I know is they have a diamond and they're placing the ace of diamonds on top of it. I need to track the ace of diamonds. And what I love about this effect is normally with a key card routine, you would have to take the cards back now. So I'd have to look through and find the Ace of Diamonds and the card in front of it would be the selected card. However, if you tell them to shuffle because it's a small stack on top, they can shuffle. And what that does is that keeps the half of cards up here. So these are the diamond cards being shuffled into the top portion. And all you did was put random cards in between those two cards. You can in fact do a second shuffle because the diamond stack is gonna be at the top. They do a second shuffle and all you do are putting random cards in between. So that Ace of Diamonds is still technically right next to the, uh, the Eight of Diamonds. So look, if you look here, notice all those shuffles did was place two other cards that are not diamonds in between. So for the method to work, when I go through the cards, I have to find my Ace of Diamonds and then find the first diamond that's in front of it. So I go back this way and there's the first diamond in front of it, and that's gonna be the card, the eight of diamonds. I could take it out, place it on the table, and reveal it however I like. Uh, it's a really simple method, but really, really clever, and a lot of good layers there. Remember, you can do two shuffles, because all you're doing in those shuffles is placing random cards in between. I'll do it again for you here, uh, just so you can see. I'm gonna take out all those diamonds, because they were on top, so you don't want them randomly in the middle. And I'm gonna do a face up for you this time, so you can see the process of how this works. So let's do the whole routine face up. 
So I'm gonna get all my diamonds out just like this. Place this here. Place my ace of diamonds here. That goes on top. And I'm gonna have four random cards, doesn't matter, placed on top of that. And here's how I get into the routine. So I'm gonna start by saying, I'm gonna go through the cards like this. I'm gonna have you deal the cards one at a time, slowly and silently. And anytime you get the urge to stop, I want you to stop. And then you look at the card on top of the deck. Do you understand? Yes, I understand, Mr. Magician. Fantastic. These cards go on top just like this. So now the Ace of Diamonds is on top. There's four random cards and there's my diamond stack. I tell the spectators to deal down onto the table. I wait a second. I watch them at this point. So they continue dealing. I'm going to look away. Make sure you deal silently. They keep going and they stop whenever they like. Let's say they stop here. So they're going to have the King of Diamonds. They look at the top card. They get the King of Diamonds. Now your Ace of Diamonds gets placed on top. Pick up all the cards on the table. You got them. Drop them on top. Ace of Diamonds is placed right on top of the King of Diamonds. Now, like I said, because this stack is at the top like this, you can actually just shuffle from the center and all the cards can get mixed. But notice when you mix it, those diamonds still for the most part retain in the top half. So all I did was stick a random card between the Ace of Diamonds and the King of Diamonds. So there's some random card there. You can give it another shuffle. And the reason why you can give it another shuffle, because even if you take about half the pack, notice even if there's some diamonds, they don't fall in there. Let's just say they're, they're worse than diamonds. When you shuffle those diamonds, they're gonna end up on top. So they wouldn't end up inside between the king and the ace. All these black cards, or these face down cards, I should say, are gonna get shuffled into that. So you do that same thing again. They can shuffle again. It doesn't change anything because for your method and your purposes, when you look through for the ace of diamonds, the card right in front of it, so in this case, it'll be this way. You spread through, this should be the ace of diamonds here. No, that's the king of diamonds. You find the ace of diamonds here. That'll be your key card. And then the first one before it facing you is gonna be the one you take out and then show that's the card. That just shows you the working of the method. But like I said, it's a really, really fantastic effect. Really simple. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this. Is this something you think would fool a magician? Comment down below and I'll see you all in the next episode.